Math 287, Cuesta College, I'm Joe Vasta, and this is section 10.4. You might wonder what happened to 10.3. It's still there in your book, but um, Cuesta College, we skip 10.3. We don't really need it. This um, class is just an introduction to Laplace transforms. And um, 10.3 is periodic functions, which is important, but it's not needed to um, move on through chapter 10. So what are we doing here? IVP, that's initial value problems, and the Laplace transform. We're going to see why we've been um, suffering with Laplace transform and the inverse transform in, the, in section 10.1 and 10.2. We are going to see how to solve a differential equation. So let's go ahead, and this right here is a derivation. It's not PowerPoint, but in fact, it might be better because um, this is kind of what I would do in class. So the Laplace transform of f prime. That's a weird thing to, uh, to ask, but we're going to go ahead and do this anyway. So you don't, know, you don't have to know how to do this derivation to do your homework or the test, but let's go ahead and do this. So this is e to the negative st. I'm going back to the definition, and then I'm going to put f prime of t right there. Okay. How am I going to, what am I going to do here? I mean, this is so abstract. You know, if it, if it said e to the 2t or whatever, I could do it. But this is just where, what makes some people say, I, I want to get away from the math classroom. Well, you are away from the math classroom. Um, chances are you're in your home watching this video. Okay, so what I'm going to do, and some of you already know what this means. You know that this is my notation or whatever for integration by parts. There's the derivative, there's the integral. I'm actually going to put e to the negative st on that side, which is weird. But the reason I'm doing that is because the other part is f prime. And I know how to take the integral of f prime. The integral of f prime is f. And the derivative of e to the negative st is negative s e to the negative st. A little chain rule there. And then I have my plus, minus, plus. Now, as I keep doing this, I'm going to have a hard time putting an expression for this right here. And, you know, I mean, nothing's going to go away and zero out. I'm turning on the integration by parts machine. So when I turn on the integration by parts machine, I um, write out this guy right here, f of t times e to the negative st. So let's write that out. I'll write it a little differently, e to the negative st, f of t. But then immediately after, I'm going to turn off the integration by parts machine by taking the integral of the product of those. So um, you see two negatives, which make a plus. I'm going to go ahead and say plus the integral of this stuff, s e to the negative s t, and then f of t dt. Now we also cannot forget to put our limits of integration right here from zero to infinity. Now, lots of times um, we'd like to have um, functions where you can take the Laplace transform of. And so we want this function to be um, of exponential order. We want it to be bound by an exponential function. So when we put infinity in, we're going to get a zero. Now, it all depends what that function is, but at this level, We'll just put that there, okay? And then when I put 0 in for t, I end up getting e to the 0, which is 1, f of 0. And so here's the fundamental theorem of calculus. We have that right there. Meanwhile, over here, I can factor, or not factor out, but I'm going to take out an s because I'm integrating with respect to t. So I have plus s. Can't take out anything else, so I'll go integral. 0 to infinity, e to the negative s, t, f of t, dt. Okay, so what do I have here? I have negative f 
of 0, and then I have plus s. Now, does, I'll probably use a color that won't show up on the PDF, but oh well. Does that look familiar? And the answer is, yes, it should look familiar. That is just the Laplace transform of f. And so we have our results. Um, what is our result? Our result is the Laplace transform of f prime. Now I'm actually going to call it y prime. Okay, so Laplace transform of y prime equals. I'll write this one first. S times Laplace transform of y. S times Laplace transform of y minus y of zero. And so this would be one I would tell you to memorize if this was a face-to-face -face class. But now we're going to have this class online here. So what can I, I can tell you to memorize it, but people, you know, it's open book, open note test. So here it goes. Let's write it up on this page. So L Y prime equals sly minus yo. That's how I'm going to remember it. So I'll put that right there. This is sly minus yo. Okay, so that's that's how I remember it. I just, that little phrase there, sly minus yo. And we've just derived that right there. Let's go ahead and box it. That's going to help us solve differential equations. Let's go ahead and derive another one. I want to derive the Laplace transform of a second derivative on a function. And so all I do is um, use this formula here. I'm going to go S L of, you know, you had a first derivative in the original function. So I'll have now the first derivative here. And then I'll go minus Y prime of zero. So all I'm doing is applying this formula for y double prime. Okay, so we'll keep going on this one. This one's going to be s. And now I have l of y prime, which is just that formula. So this is sly minus yo. Oh, great. I just wrote the yo there. Okay, so that's what, okay. This guy right here becomes this guy right here. And then we have minus y prime of zero. So this becomes s squared L of y minus s y of zero minus y prime of zero. And I'll rewrite this here, L Y double prime. And we'll box that. So this is the Laplace transform of the second derivative. So the question is, and we won't need this in our homework or on the test, but this is for all you math majors or um, people who are really interested in this. Could you see the pattern for Y Triple prime, uh, triple prime, triple pine. I think I want to go to the mountains. Um, so pause the video and see if you can write out the formula for that. It's going to have four terms. Okay, so if you look at the pattern there, look, the double prime has an s squared. Look, you see an s squared, an s, and an s to the zero. So this one's going to have an s cubed, and it's going to be L of y. I'm just looking at the pattern here, and then everything else has minuses, so I'm going to go minus s squared. And now this yo is not near the s, but it's actually going to be near the s squared. And then we have minus s, it's y prime of 0. And then we have minus, and then we have y um, double prime of zero. So that is what you do. It's almost like you took this part right here and you multiplied it by 
s, and so you got the first three terms, and then you have minus y double prime. And so that is basically, so you could probably write a formula for the nth derivative. It might have summation notation if you're really clever, or you could just look at the formula in the book, but you really only need these two formulas, the first derivative and the second derivative, but maybe you can see the pattern there. So the rest of this lecture in 10.4 is me cranking out a few problems. So now we have the ability to solve a differential equation using the Laplace transform. If you've never done this before, you might want to mark this on your calendar as a special day because it will be the first time you've ever encountered this. Okay, so look what we have. The Laplace transform will solve differential equations that have initial values. So there's the limitation. But some of you might say the initial values, you can just go ahead and put y of a equals b and solve it that way. Um, it's, it's a little harder to do that. So we just like to say the Laplace transform has its limitations. You have to have initial conditions. Now engineers, that's really all they have. I mean, not all they have. I mean, that's what you have when you do lots of engineering problems. You have initial conditions. So that's why engineers like the Laplace transform. So what am I going to do? I'm going to Laplace transform both sides of that equation. So let's go ahead and do this. L of the left hand side equals L of the right hand side. It's almost like when you learned how to log both sides of the equation. Except logarithms were not linear transformations, so you couldn't do the next step that I'm about to do. Um, if you were doing logarithms, but with Laplace transform, you can now write this as L y prime plus 3 times L of y equals, you can even bring the 13 out in front of this Laplace transform over here, 13 L sine 2t. Okay, so now it's time to take the Laplace transforms of these three things. The Laplace transform of y prime is what we derived with the sly minus yo. So let me write that down. Sly minus yo. And then this one right here, plus 3 times the Laplace transform of y. I'm just going to leave that alone, okay? And then this one over here, 13 times the Laplace transform of sine 2t. Well, the Laplace transform of sine 2t, that's the one with the b on the top. So you're going to write this as 2 over s squared plus 4. So what I just did going from here to here was use the shortcut for the sine bt. Okay, something else that I'm going to do. I'm going to go ahead and replace my L of Y's with a letter like W. Okay, so I have S times W. So I'm just, that's what I'm going to do. And it will make the algebra easier, especially when I get a second order differential equation. A minus yo, but we know Y of 0 is 6. So minus 6 plus 3W. So this is weird, and when you use the Laplace transform to solve differential equations, you are actually putting your initial values in pretty early on. Whereas you did it the other way, you, you put your initial values in after you find the general solution. This thing is going to equal 26 over s squared plus 4. Okay, so what do we want to do now? We want to solve for w. In order to solve for w, I have to add 6 to both sides. So sw plus 3w equals 26 all over s squared plus 4. And then we'll have a plus 6. Okay, so now I'm trying to solve for w. I'm going to factor a w out, and I have a w. This is s plus 
3 equals 26 over s squared plus 4 plus 6 on the right hand side. Now a question that you might ask is should I get a common denominator and write this as one fraction? You can do that if you want, but I'm going to hold off on doing that because, um, well, we, have, we don't know how to do this, so I'm just going to keep things like this, okay? And then we'll talk about that, you know, especially on the next problem as well. So I'm going to divide everything in that equation by s plus 3. So I have w equals 26 over s plus 3 times s squared plus 4, and then this is going to be plus 6 over s plus 3. So I can still combine those fractions together if I'd like, okay? And there's nothing wrong with doing that. But let's go ahead and remember what w is. What is w? w is the Laplace transform of y. So I'm writing this all down here not changing anything on the right hand side and how I want to finish off this problem is I would like to on both sides of this equation and I'll just go like this apply the inverse Laplace transform because what is that going to do on the left hand side it's going to be L inverse L which those will go away you'll have Y equals your solution. And so it, this problem breaks down to can we find the inverse Laplace transform of this and of this. Now getting back to the question should we have put those together? Well the, that comes down to do you know how to find the inverse Laplace transform of this guy right here very simply and the answer is yes this is going to be an e to the negative 3t with a 6 next to it. So when I could actually do the inverse transform of this, you know, of, of, you know I'm, I'm wondering, should I put them together? If I can do the inverse Laplace transform of one of them, then I will not put them together. But, I mean, perhaps when I first taught the class, I put them together on this example, and we never even mentioned keeping them apart. But, you know, after a while, I realized, wait a minute, if you keep them apart, you make the partial fraction decomposition here that you have to do, you'll make it a lot simpler. So what I'm going to do, so I'm going to come back to this equation, but I can't do anything, and you know, the, the thing that's stopping me on this is not this term and not this term, but this guy. I'm trying to do the inverse Laplace transform of that, and I will need partial fraction decomposition. So we'll move this up. I'll do my partial fraction decomposition. I'll do that all in purple. So I have 26 over s plus 3 times s squared plus 4. Now the partial fraction decomposition, if you're paying attention to this, it's only happening when I have to find the inverse Laplace transform. It's not happening when I have to find the, the Laplace transform. So how am I going to decompose this? Okay, not how am I going to decompose, but um, I'm going to, I have a linear factor, so I'm going to go a over s plus 3 plus, and then here's a quadratic factor, this is going to be bs plus c over s squared plus 4. Okay, what am I going to do now? I'm going to go ahead and multiply by the LCD, so I'm going to get 26 equals a times s squared plus 4 plus bs plus c times s squared plus 4. You might be wondering, what did you just do there, Joe? I multiplied, let's see if I can, I'll use this color right here, I multiplied this equation by the LCD. s plus 3, s squared plus 4. That's what I did. Okay. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to see if I can, um, wait, something does not look right. <laughs> okay. So yeah, I say that's what I did, but is that really what I did? No, I made a mistake here. So uh -oh, I'm, I'm all out of whiteout. Where's the whiteout? Ah. 
Okay, um, I don't know what I'm gonna do here. I'm gonna go get some whiteout. So I'm pausing the video, and I'm gonna um, go get the whiteout. And I'll yell at people. I'll be like, "Hey!" And I'll be yelling at my kids, "Where's the whiteout? I don't know where it is." And then you know, like, hey, and all this arguing. So it's probably best if I pause the video. So got the got the more whiteout tape here. So hopefully this works. Yeah, so when I multiplied by the LC. So I should have probably just written out that green part because maybe I wouldn't have messed this up. This guy right here is incorrect. So if you happen to not be in this class and you're just watching this for fun or to help you because you're in another class, what are you doing watching this video? I mean, look. Look at this. I suck. You can find some of my students and ask them and they'll say, yeah, he sucks really sucks at math. Okay, um, now, there's a few ways I can do this. Some teachers would say, oh, multiply through and then, you know, equate coefficients. I'm going to go ahead and see if I can zero some things out. I'm going to let s equal negative 3. When I let s equal negative 3, I end up getting 26 equals, this is going to be a times negative 3 squared, quantity squared is 9, 9 plus 4 is 13. And then this guy over here, look, that's zero. It zeroes everything out. That guy's dead. So what does A equal? A equals 2. Okay, let's let S equal, you know, you might be thinking, oh, well, Joe, you can't do anything else now. Yes, I can. Watch this. A is 2. I'm going to let S equal 0. When I let s equal 0, I get 26 equals 2 times 4, which is 8. See, s is 0. And then over here, I get just a c times 3. So I end up getting 18, when I subtract the 8, equals 3c, c equals 6. So, C is 6, and I know what you're thinking, that, that I can't let S equal anything else, because I'm trapped. Am I trapped? I can let S equal pretty much anything I want it to equal, like 27. I'm going to let S equal 1. I don't want to let S, S equal any of the values that I just did. Look what happens when I let S equal 1. I end up getting 26 equals. So, 1 plus 4 is 5 times 2 is 10. So 26 equals 10 plus s is 1, b plus 6 times 4. So I end up getting 16 equals 4b plus 24. Bring it up over here. I end up getting 4b equals negative 8 and b equals negative b equals negative oh good thing i have this uh, that's ne negative oh look at that what is what's up with this look at that two okay well anyway well the b equals negative two now could you have done this another way yeah I always like to do this. I like to chip away at this before I have to multiply that out. And in this example, I never had to multiply it all out. Now, some of you might be thinking, well, Joe, well, I want to see what happens if you did it the other way. Would you get the same values? Um, I think I would. I'm going to actually do that. Okay, so well, let's do it the other way. I have 26 equals a s squared plus 4 plus b s plus c s plus 3. So what I'm doing, this is actually just extra. Um, and, you know, we've already got the a, b, and c, so we should just finish the problem. But I, I want to do it this way because some of you were taught this way. 26 equals a s square good thing there's exponents otherwise i'd be writing a bad word there plus 4a 
plus, we're going to FOIL BS squared plus 3BS plus CS plus 3C. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and underline all my S squareds in one color. So I have A plus B equals zero. Because there's a zero S squared on the left hand side. And let's underline all of our terms that have just S's in them, which would be, let's see here. Uh, first outside. Oh, so this right here is an S. Sorry about that. So I, I knew something was up there inside last. Okay, so I'll underline those. So this gives me 3B plus C equals zero. So yeah, I made a mistake there. So this is a great day for me um, with the white out up there and then that happening there. And then um, we'll underline the constants in green. So here's a constant, there's a constant, and there's a constant. So look what you end up getting. You end up getting 26 equals 4A plus 3C. But do you see the problem here is now you have a system of three equations, three unknowns. Now this one you could probably solve pretty quickly, whereas the method that I used up there, I never had a system. But, you know, let's just go ahead and say that B is negative A. I'll do this without a matrix. So I really have negative 3A plus C equals 0. And um, what does C equal? C equals 3A. So over here I have 26 equals 4A plus 3 times C, which would be 9A. 13a equals 26, a is 2, and over here we can see that c is going to be 6, c will equal 6, and then over here b is going to equal negative a, so we can even look over here and say that b is negative 2. Okay, so I mean, look at this. You can compare which way you like better. Um, there was a system of equations here, and sometimes it's worse than this. I did it without a matrix. Or we could just do it this way. I call this way the chipping away method, where I chip away at this and figure out what, and you know, cross them out as I figure out what they are. Um, so in any case, the partial fraction decomposition for some of you might be the worst part of this problem. Let's get back to what we are supposed to do on this problem. What are we supposed to do on the problem here? So I'll write out that differential equation. So I'm not going to move the paper around. This was L of Y equals. Okay, so I have A, which is, I'm going to plug that into my partial fraction decomposition. So there it is right there. In fact, there's the differential equation that I'm trying to write up here. So A, let's see if I can get this all together. A was 2, so this happens to be 2 over S plus 3. And then we have B is negative 2, so I have plus minus 2S, and C is 6, plus um, 6. This is all over s squared plus 4. So we did a partial fraction decomposition on that right there. So we still have to write out this guy right here. So this is plus 6 over s plus 3. So all this purple part right here was the partial fraction decomposition. We come back, you know, we, we were here and we were like, we're almost done. We really were not almost done. We had to do that purple stuff. Now we are almost done. Um, the deal is I have to do um, 
maybe split that fraction and then we'll inverse transform everything. So L of Y is 2 over S plus 3. And then we have minus 2S over S squared plus 4. Then I have plus 6 over S squared plus 4. And then I have plus 6 over S plus 3. Now I know some people are thinking this, Joe, you should put those two like terms together. I'm going to show you what happens when I don't, okay? So let's inverse Laplace um, both sides. So to put those two terms together, I, have, I would have two of these creatures plus six of those creatures, which would be eight of them. I am not going to do that. So watch this. I, the inverse Laplace transform of the Laplace transform is just y. Um, inverse transform of 2 over s plus 3, this is going to be 2e to the negative 3t. The inverse transform of negative 2s over s squared plus 4, that is the cosine. I'm going to pull out the negative 2. So I have negative 2 cosine, and then we look at that 4 there, so this is going to be a 2t. The inverse Laplace transform of this, I, this is going to be the sign. You need a 2 on the top. So I'm going to take this 6. I'm going to write it as a 2 times a 3. So this is going to be plus 3. This guy energizes and becomes sine 2t. And then over here I have plus this one's going to be an e to the negative 3t, so there's six of those creatures. And so in the end, even though I said I don't want to put those like terms together, I still have to put them together over here. So if I had put them together first, I would only have to do three inverse transforms on the right-hand side. But no worries, we'll just write down the answer. So I'll put the two and the six together, so this is going to be eight of these creatures. Minus two cosine 2t plus 3 sine 2t, and that completes problem number 1, solving a differential equation, one that we could, by the way, already solve using annihilators or variation of parameters. Uh, the worst part of this was the partial fraction decomposition. Let's go do one more problem, and that will complete 10.4, but this was your very first problem to show you that differential equations like this with initial conditions can be solved using the Laplace transform. We inverse transform it at the end. We get our answer. It is in some ways, in some sick way, I'm going to say this, it is beautiful the way it works. So let's go ahead and do problem number two. Problem number two is going to be a second order differential equation. And so there it is. We have y double prime minus 3y prime plus 2y equals 4e to the 3t. y of 0 is 1. y prime of 0 is 2. Let us get going on this one. So the first thing I'm going to do is I want to Laplace transform both sides of this equation. Okay. So when I do that, um, you know, you can go like this. You can put parentheses here and say, and I'm going to Laplace transform both sides. And so I'm going to have the Laplace transform of y double prime minus 3 times the Laplace transform of y prime plus 2 times the Laplace transform of y. And I can do it this way because the Laplace transform is a linear transformation. I can never do this with logs where I bring the logs in like that. This is going to equal 4 times the Laplace transform of e to the 3t. So now I've got to take some Laplace transforms and we'll see what happens um, on that. The first Laplace transform I need to take is the Laplace transform of the second derivative, which we kind of derived this. This is s squared l of y minus s yo and then minus y prime of 0. We didn't have a really good phrase, you know, like slime minus yo was really cool, but we didn't have one for the, the second derivative. 
Now I'm going to go minus 3 times the Laplace transform of y prime. Well, that's the sly minus yo. Sly minus yo. Am I even going to have enough room? I don't know. Plus 2 times the Laplace transform of y. This is going to equal 4 times the Laplace transform of e to the 3t. So this is going to be 4 over s minus 3. Okay, I'm going to take each of these L of y's here. We have one right there, and we have one right there, and one right there. I'm going to replace those with another letter that I don't see, so I'll use W. That's my default letter for this. So S squared W. Okay, we have Y of 0 is given to be 1. So this guy right here is 1. So there's going to be a 1 right here. That's y of 0. And we also have y prime of 0 is 2. So this guy right here is 2. So let's write this all out. So this is s squared w minus s times 1. Then we have minus 2. Then we have minus 3 times s w minus 1 plus 2w equals 4 over s minus 3. Okay, let's simplify the left-hand side. s squared w minus s minus 2 minus, distribute the 3, 3sw uh, plus 3 plus 2w. This equals 4 over s minus 3. Okay, um, that's a little low, but that's all right. I'm going to go ahead and put all my W's together. So I have S squared W. Then I have minus 3SW plus 2W. And um, over here, let's see, I'll have minus S. And this is going to be plus 1. This is going to equal 4 over s minus 3. Um, I have s squared w minus 3sw plus 2w equals 4 over s minus 3 and then I'm going to add an s and subtract a 1. And the big question is should I make that all one fraction? I'll wait to see what happens over here. Okay, in fact that's my next step. I'm going to factor out a W. So when I factor out a W on the left hand side, I end up getting S squared minus 3S plus 2. So let me write out this whole equation here and then point something out that's kind of neat. On this one right here, Look at this um, polynomial, s squared minus 3s plus 2. Well, if you were doing this problem here using annihilators and you were writing down your associated homogeneous differential equation, you would write out r squared minus 3r plus 2. That would be your um, auxiliary polynomial, r squared minus 3r plus 2. But look, we have that right there. Will that always happen? Yeah, it happened there. Here's problem number one. The auxiliary polynomial is r plus 3, s plus 3. So that's always going to happen. So that's a good sanity check. So what are we doing? <laughs> we um, we want to see if we can factor this. And that does factor over the, the rational numbers. This is going to be s minus 1, s minus 2. This equals 4 over s minus 3 plus s minus 1. Now the deal is, I mean, we could put those together, but look what happens when I do not put those together and I divide everything by s minus 1, s minus 2. I end up getting w equals 4 over s minus 1, s minus 2, s minus 3 plus I'm going to like put that, you know, treat it maybe as one term. I put maybe put parentheses around there. 
I'm going to divide that by s minus 1, s minus 2. Look what happens there. The s minus 1's cancel. So even though there's nothing wrong with putting all those together, you're just going to have like uglier partial fraction decomposition, meaning there's going to be like some s's up here in the numerator. It's not the end of the world, but I can actually find the inverse transform of 1 over s minus 2. So let me go ahead and write this out in black ink because I'm going to replace that W with an L of Y. And we have 4 over S minus 1, S minus 2, S minus 3, plus 1 over S minus 2. Now, if you're really dying to put those uh, fractions together, you can go for it. You will end up getting the same answer you know, at the very end. But the deal is, when I go to inverse Laplace transform everything, this is a cinch. This is pretty simple. This right here, I need partial fraction decomposition. So I'm going to go ahead and turn to purple ink. We're going to go ahead and do the partial fraction decomposition of 4 over s minus 1, s minus 2, s minus 3. So this equals, those are all linear. So this is going to be a over s minus 1 plus b over s minus 2 plus c over s minus 3. I'm going to multiply this equation, and this is where I had a hard time the last time for some reason. s minus 1, s minus 2. That would be funny if they could actually take your math degree away from you. They're like, we saw you on a video, so where's that PhD? And Maybe it's like hanging in my office or something, and then they like take a hammer and crack it. That would um, be funny. I mean, it sounds funny. If it really happened, I think it wouldn't be as funny. Okay, so look what we have here. We have A, and then this is the S minus 1's cancel. You have S minus 2, S minus 3, plus B. We have S minus 1, S minus 3 plus C, and this is going to be S minus 2, S minus 3. Woo! Okay. Now, we were talking about, like, when you have partial fraction decompositions, there could be, like, two different ways of doing them. And um, I showed you, I think I showed both ways last problem. I'm not going to show both ways on this problem. I'm going to do this way the way I like doing it, by setting S equal to different values. Now, um, something does look wrong here. Yes, it is. This, man, what is my problem here? When I, um, when I multiply this one, the s minus 3 is canceled. And so this really should say s minus 1, s minus 2. So I should just know that, you know, if I'm going to do another one in lecture, you know, we'll do more of these, that um, at this step, I should just slow down and say I'm going to um, probably make a mistake. Okay, so I think I like the way that looks better. I'm going to let s equal 1. And so I'm going to get 4 equals a. And then what do we have here? We have this is going to be negative 1, and this is going to be negative 2. Plus, look, if you put s equals 1 there, you get this guy's dead and that guy's dead. So you end up getting 4 equals 2a, and a equals 2. Okay, so let's let s equal 2. When I let s equal 2, I end up getting 4 equals. The first guy's dead, because that guy right there. And then we have plus b, and then we have s is 2, so we have 1 and negative 1. And then that guy's dead. And so we have 4 equals negative b, b equals negative 4. Let's go ahead and let, oh, we're almost coming off the range of the camera here. I'm going to let s equal 3 now. Okay, so that's, that's going to kill off the first and the second guy on the right-hand side. So I'll have 4 equals dead plus that guy's dead plus s times 2 times 1. 4 equals 2s. So what am I saying s? Um, okay, hold on. What's happening here?
that's where the SC. So obviously I shouldn't be doing video lectures today, but if I get behind, then, then it won't be posted before the day of the video, so what, what am I doing? Strike three, I should be out. I should just walk walk right off here and leave, but okay. So what does, um, <laughs> and so that's a, that's a C as well. Good enough. Okay, so there's the C. So C equals two. Wow, so now I'm going to go ahead and um, write out this partial fraction decomposition. The partial fraction decomposition. I'll write it out this time and then write out the differential equation. I have A, which is 2 over S minus 1 minus 4 over S minus 2 plus 2 over S minus 3. So that's what the partial fraction decomposition is. I'm going to draw a line and we're going to go back to the differential equation. So this partial fraction decomposition was rather dramatic. I have that right there. Another piece of paper. And what do we have? Our differential equation looked like this. It looked like L of Y equals, and then there was the 4 over S minus 1, S minus 2, S minus 3. Well, that, that gets replaced with this. 2 over S minus 1 minus 4 over S minus 2 plus 2 over S minus 3. And then we also had a plus 1 over S minus 2. Let's actually show you what, what that was. So I'm just rewriting this equation right here that had the L of Y in it. Where going from here to here was a lot of trauma. It was all that purple ink doing the partial fraction decomposition. Now, what I'm going to do this time, and I did not do this last time, is I see two like terms. This minus 4 over s minus 2 and plus 1 over s minus 2 is going to give me a negative 3. So let's go ahead and, you know, combine like terms now and then do the inverse transform. So 2 over s minus 1 minus 3 over s minus 2 plus 2 over s minus 3. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to inverse transform both sides of the equation. I'm trying to see what color I used for that. Oh, just this green pen here. L inverse. We'll move that out of the way. And let's see what we get. The inverse transform of the Laplace transform of y is y. The inverse transform of 2 over s minus 1 is 2e to the negative. Sorry, not the negative. 2e to the t. And then we have minus 3e to the 2t. And then we have plus 2e to the 3t. And that completes our differential equation, which originally looked like this, had initial conditions, and we solved it and we got this. Now, you can do this using annihilators. You can do this using variation of parameters. Um, it's about the same amount of work, but what's going to happen is we're going to learn some shifting theorems and our driving functions are going to be piecewise defined functions and be things that are more complicated that annihilators and variation of parameters would take a longer time than doing the Laplace transform. So that concludes 10.4 IVPs and the Laplace transform. Have a good day.